Hi everyone! Um, so this is like my hundredth attempt at making a good clean video. I don't have a tripod so I'm sorry for if there's a little bit of shaking. Um, yeah, so I am doing a review on Crayola Magic Model Clay and um, some tidbits that might be helpful for you. I will do another video on polymer clay at another time and some of the charms I made just because this video could get really long. Um, so let's get started. Um, first of all, this is Crayola Magic Model Clay. This is my Jack Skellington. Okay, it's kind of cushy. He is about three days dry. Still has a nice cushiness, a velvety texture. I do like this clay. Um, great um, for cartoony type items. I think. So, let me get my notes here. Alright, I don't know if you guys can see this. Ta-da! Magic clay. Pull this back. There you go. There he is. The white Crayola Magic Model Clay. I suggest white because um, it's really versatile. Uh, there's an other, other videos that say it doesn't take color very well. I actually think it really does. It, I mean, depending on how, how pigmented you want it, but so far, all the subtle colors that I want, it's taken super well. Um, and as long as uh, you use white, you can it'll become very versatile. This small package probably made, let's see, it's four ounces. I probably made pieces about yay big. I made probably about 30 or 40 pieces, so that's a good amount. So you really don't need a whole lot, unless you're making the bigger pieces. And um, they sell this in a bucket of two pounds, I think. I think it would be well worth the money. I'm going to go back and actually buy that one. Um, anywho, so that's the cover. Let me put this away. Sorry, guys trash can behind me. Okay, so when I was talking about color, um, I used acrylics, high viscosity studio paint by People, and I just use the primary colors and mix them because it's good enough for me. I'm a total beginner, guys, so bear with me. Um, yep, and some stuff that I used here. Uh, they don't take the eye pins very well, wet or dry, so I, so I don't mess up my circular pieces. I don't put the eye pins until they're dry. And then when I do, I put a little bit of this Dazzle Tack jewelry glue. Quick grab, crystal clear, shockproof, incredibly strong, totally true. This guy right here is a polymer clay piece, and I put him through everything, and he has just taken it. So this stuff is good. Um, I like to seal them with something. I've been trying this. This is new. It's the Instant Decoupage Water-Based Glue Sealer and Finish. It actually works really good, but if you're... Uh, I would not recommend dipping because it's really thick. If you brush it on, it will kind of leave a little bit of the brush strokes. And um, you cannot do the whole thing at once because um, if you dip it, it will be too thick. But this stuff is good for a ton of different stuff, so I definitely recommend it. Just not for these pieces unless you're going to brush it on. Just remember there will be brush strokes left. I recommend the Delta uh, Ceramic Coat, a gloss exterior varnish. I really like this stuff. It's really watery. Um, you can dip your pieces in it, and you just kind of shake it a little, and it shakes off the excess, and then your pieces will be nice and glossy and smooth. And you won't have to leave, like, a half a bottom part undone. You could get the whole thing done. It's that. So if you're looking at all these pieces, they all finish with a nice, smooth, velvety crust. It's really fun to touch. Um, but if you want to make that bitten look, then uh, you tear it very gently, and I recommend using a toothpick to kind of pick at it. Um, it leaves this really and as long as you don't press it, let it dry with the texture sticking out, it dries to this bready finish. It's really cool. 
So you mix the color into, or you could have a white bun, uh, round it out, let it dry, get the skin to form, and then pick at it, <laughs> and then go ahead and put um, a colorant on it. I use Coastal Scents palette because um, it has really good pigment. You gotta use really good pigment powders. You don't have to use chalk. Um, I don't use makeup very often, and I just decided it was a good buy because it's so cheap. It tinted this. I don't think you can see it very well, but it tinted it really well on top. See how the golden brown kind of fades? It gives it that bake look. Yeah, so I recommend, you, you can use your finger or a brush. Either way, just remember to kind of, as you go out, to kind of soften the color so it looks lighter and more cooked. And after you do that, then I'd put the face on, and if you prefer, you can put the varnish. Oh, I mean the eye pin and then the varnish. But if you leave them without the varnish, they have a really nice cushy texture. Um, they get harder. You put the varnish on. Yep. Um, let's see. Yes. So, what else did I want to tell you? Uh, in the package, it comes really soft. It's like really easy to mold, easier than polymer clay. Um, but like I said, you can't really cut through these. Polymer clay, if you put a cut through it, it's going to have this nice smooth finish. And for these, it doesn't do that. So it has, this has the torn look. So depending on what you want, you'll, you'll have to decide. Um, it doesn't hold texture super well. This is a large donut I did, and you have to, like, kind of beat it a little bit to get it to keep the texture. This is done, this texture is done with a round tip tool. Just kind of give it that beat up powdered donut look from the bag. And then the texture, once you beat it and you kind of overemphasize the texture, you kind of let it sit and dry and it comes back to its shape. And then it just leaves a little bit of an indentation, as you can see here. So it doesn't hold texture very well, but... Um, it looks good. <laughs> the sauce, I just thought it would be neat to have sauce on a donut, because plain white donuts seem boring. Um, sometimes, if you wait till it's partially dry, it will hold, like, this came from a McDonald's napkin. I just kind of, when it was wet, I molded it, and then I, to form it, it was a ball, and then you press it a little bit to give it this bun look. And when you press it, it presses into the napkin um, texture. A any napkin from a fast food place will do. And um, just let it dry for a little bit, otherwise it'll tear and stick. You let it dry, and then you peel it off gently, and it gets this kind of like on a baked um, bread tray look. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. But that's kind of cool. Just little things you discover when you're working with this stuff. Like I said, I'm completely new to this too. Um, let's see what else. Dry time. They say a piece, a small piece about this with this kind of thickness takes about 24 hours. But I suggest, especially if you want to cut into this, let it dry. If you cut it too early, it'll get mushy and you won't get that nice bread texture. So let this dry for, I'm going to say two to three days. I mean, to get it really nicely done and clean, nice clean cuts. This is really fun to touch, you guys. It's like almost better than a squishy. Resist you little, gotta have a little fighter. Um, and the fillings, I just use um, puppy paints or my favorite are those decorating things from Kawaii cupcake kits. I like the chocolate because it looks like red bean. So this is a red bean bun with a bitten red bean filling. And if you can see here, um, if you look straight on, the cut of the bite is angled so you can see the filling. Also the filling is kind of overdone so it pokes out a little bit. And I think that's the best look because when you pull it to the side and you give it a little cush cush, remember don't smush it. Just push it. Um, it looks like it's being popped out, like you're getting that red bean filling, and I think that's a really good look. So that's my red bean bun with the red bean filling. This is my green tea mochi with a red bean filling. You can say it's chocolate, I don't care. Um, yes, this is a mochi red bean bun. And this, if it has no bite, I consider it 